KJ and Lions on WEEI. Yeah. KJ and Lions, WEEI, hour number three. Thank you so much for spending your Saturday with us. 617 779 7937, text line 37937. John, did you see the tweet earlier this week from Jeff Passan, VSPN, saying, look, Otani seems to be more in play with the Red Sox than what had been stated before. Yeah, and- it, look, it, I want to get excited at those things, but then it, then I see other tweets, like Hector Gomez tweeted today, like, the Dodgers are going to go all in for Otani and Mike Trout, and I'm like, oh. Yeah, I don't think there's enough money in the world. You know, like, the Dodgers <laughs> might have enough money in the world. Well, I I, yeah, I, so here's what's the and I, I was going to play the audio from December 30th of last year, but due to technical issues, I can't play the audio or it will absolutely destroy today's show. I, that's the only thing I could say. So I can only read piece by piece what I said because I have the video up at my KJ Carson channel, which is a repurposing of some of the show's uh, audio here on the show. And I said, hey, some of people are waiting uh, that the, the Red Sox are, are not spending at that time because they could be laying in wait, waiting for Shohei Atani, and that there that nobody else in the game who could pitch, hit, and pretty much play every day. Um, let me add an addendum real quick to that. Think about all the construction that has gone up around Fenway. You've got a new performance venue. You've got all these things that are being built up for the sake of the customer. This is what I was saying at the time, that – when you get an everyday player like Shohei Otani, people can come to the ballpark every day versus, say, a Yamamoto, where it's every four days, and Lord forbid Yamamoto hit a couple of guys the wrong way, and he gets suspended for like eight games and misses two starts. So the, I would go on to say in this that if it costs $100 million more to get Otani, that there are actually people behind the scenes that are thinking about how they can make that money back fast through international partnerships, game rights, uh, show things. You might even make a mini buddy comedy between Otani and uh, and Yoshida that would then make the Red Sox this international conglomerate team that would fit under the guise of what FSG does. Yeah, and That's that's the overview. And, and just from my perspective, KJ, so in the last, like, eight years, I think I've bought one sports jersey because someone told me adults aren't supposed to wear those. I would buy an Otani. Hip-hop videos you can, yeah. Uh, yeah, right, that's true. i got to just launch my rap career. i got to talk to Stiz about that. But <laughs> I would buy an Otani jersey. Like, you know what I mean? So, I, well, the number's like, available now. Right? Like, Bye, Urias. Here's the thing, though. <laughs> like, the biggest thing the Red Sox need, and I'm hoping Craig Breslow will be in on this because he's been good when it comes to developing pitchers and his philosophy. But they need two starting pitchers, like not just one. So, to me, if you want to bring in Otani, I'm all in. I still want a Snell, a Nola, a Montgomery, a Yamamoto, whoever. Like, because uh, Otani's not going to pitch at all this year. So even if he pitches next year, like, you still need another starting pitcher. This is a team that was bottom of the league in starting ERA, bottom of the league in quality starts all year. Like, you, they need two starting pitchers. And the saving grace, KJ, yeah. this is one of the best off seasons in a long time if you need to get starting pitchers, whether it's via trade or free agency. Right, but if you know that, and, and agents are going to know this, if you're in sure. such a high demand, that number is going to go into the water. Because think about it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nobody, nobody is going to take anything less than what Chris Sale is getting in this last in this last year. So that's going to be a starting point for any agent talking to the Red Sox. Here's where I think Breslow's skill is going to be versus then what Heim wasn't able to do. It seemed like Heim was more of the go get. The uh, the rescue dog, if you will, right? The guy who had had damaged goods, who might have something. Heim was trying to bring in the damaged goods. Now, don't get at me, dog owners. Yes, you might have a rescue. It doesn't mean it's damaged goods. But what I'm saying is Heim wasn't able to rescue these dogs. I think with Breslow, his thing is, I know a really good breeder that people don't know about. Or I had conversations with that these are people who are off the radar but are going to give us our bang for the buck and are going to be developing superstars or just below that level where it doesn't force the team to go out and buy names and not get a name return. So this is where I think Breslow's secret is because he's got a couple of guys that he brought up in the Cubs organization. One, I forgot he's already on the team and another guy who's just flying through their organization. Almost like I think last year he was like six or seven years younger 
than most of the guys on the on the on the double A team. So that's what I expect from Breslow is to be able to find the guy who knows how to breed the bull mastiff, who's off somewhere in some weird location that nobody really knows about. And when this guy shows up on the scene, you're like, wow. Because I think with with, with Brian Bayo, who I think is kind of like a gemstone, if you will, inside of the, I saw one Marvel movie, but if you know the movie I'm talking about, he's that one gemstone, but he's not the center stone, right? And I think the way he grows, if he grows with other guys that are comparable in his age, and then you have like the old school, like Baltimore Orioles, four guys winning 20 games type quality players. I'm not saying that that's what they're going to get, but I don't want to see the Red Sox go overspend for pitching when you have an overspent pitcher on the roster. So I think the ideal situation for the Red Sox in 2024 is Brian Bayo is your third starter. Because then, if he's your third starter, Paxton's your fourth and your fifth, hey, maybe it's a healthy sale, maybe it's somebody else, but you can work that out if you have two horses at the top of your rotation. Like, no matter what, they, they're they starting pitching. I'm thinking of your, John, I'm year. thinking of your math there. You say if Bre- Bayo's the three, right? Yep. Paxton's the four? Sure. So are you saying Sale is the one or two? No, he'd be like the fifth. Because you can't depend on his health. That's yeah, all. It's it's but, a health thing. But like there's no way you give him that much money and say yeah, you're is. your who, fifth who starter. Who cares how much money he's making? The people he, who have to pay no, it out. If he's your fifth best starter and he can't stay healthy, then that's where he's going to be. I don't like, think if, you could go look, into the season with like, the, let's, with, let's look at this right now. Yamamoto, I'd rather have over sale. Blake Snell, I'd rather have over sale. Aaron Nola, I'd rather have over sale. Jordan Montgomery, I'd rather have over sale. I'm not Waiting saying sale is your one. Is your one? I'm not saying he's your one. They need two starting pitchers. You cannot go into a season, depending on Chris Sale, to give you 30 starts with 20 of them being quality starts. And, and look, I like no the guy. Way you pay he a was guy a big the part fourth of starter $27 million a Why year. Why not? Well, for one year? Like, just admit you made a mistake and you overpaid for him, and you got to bite the bullet on one year. Because if you want to be a good team, he's not going to be your ace. And if you want to be a good team, he really shouldn't be your second starter Either if you want to tell me they'd put him in the three slot because of his money and they'd have Bayo at four and Paxton at five, all right, whatever. Like I could accept that, but okay, one of your t- you need two new starting pitchers next year if you're going to be a team that can go to the divisional round or divisional series, excuse me, or the ALCS. You need two new stars, and you mentioned Otani. You could use another bat too. Whether it's Otani, Juan Soto might be available for via trade. The problem with the hitting market is it's not nearly what the pitching market is. You have Otani, you have Soto via trade, and other than that, it's pretty dry. Like, Cody Bellinger had a good year last year, but but the two years before that, he was bad. Like, so that's the thing. The, the Red Sox can add two quality starters. I think it might be even harder for them to add an upgrade hitting because the options are so limited. KJ in lines, WEEI, 617-779-7937. Text line, 37937. Still to come later this hour. Uh, the third annual Jive Turkey Awards for different sports figures here, Justin, because it's no, it ain't cool being such a Jive Turkey so close to Thanksgiving. Was I nominated for one? No, okay, no, good. No, no. Thank you. I, I appreciate no, that. No, 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 not at all. There's okay. no turkey to you. Maybe a little bit of gravy, but no turkey. Ah, to you. all right, yeah. So look, yeah. here's where I think and this is going back to Breslow and how he probably constructs this. You know that sale is going to have to be somewhere in the mix because you would want to. Let's say this. Sale performs well, and then you can get someone to eat some of that contract in a trade. So there's no way you can hide him as a fourth, fifth starter because let's just say he misses his fifth start. Let's say he misses a start. Now you are you can't even showcase what he may have. I don't think he's anything lower than third. I don't know if you can go get two guys. But I think he can go get guys where, let's just call it what it is, you might start the season with Sale as your number one starter, and by the time the season is over, he may be the three starter or he's gone. Right. But I don't think it happens when you bring in big name pitchers because then you've got this other big name, big salary guy that you can't just, you have to put him out there to show that he could perform for someone else to see greater value. Now, the bad thing about that is you would presume that the Red Sox wouldn't be in the mix of things. And you don't want to hope that if you're going to make these offseason moves. But I think at the same time, Sale has to be featured somewhere. Uh, yeah, he wasn't even one starting last year, right? So it was Kluber, then Sale. I think it may maybe they get one guy who becomes the feature guy, then Sale, then Bayo. 
if Sale doesn't perform, then then you could say, hey, Bayo was outperforming Sale. We could bump him up. And now as you're bumping maybe Sale to three, there may be conversations of being able to move him. Yeah, but even with Sale, like his base salary number for the – it's his last year of his deal. Yeah. And his base salary is 27 and a half, but because of the way his contract set up, they're only paying him 17 and a half million this year. Like that's not ace money. That's not – that might be number two starter money, but – like, I, I just would not worry about where you put Chris Sale in the rotation. Like, you should bring in two new starting pitchers who are good, and then Bayo probably should be your third starter. And so then if you, you want to quibble, hey, is Sale fourth, fifth, whatever, like, and I would still probably keep him just for the year because I don't think you're going to get much trade value back for him given his injury history. Right. So I, I would keep him anyway. So just have him as part of the rotation. And I think, you know, he's a good enough pitcher that if he's your fourth guy, you're in pretty good shape, right? Real like, quick. I just, I, I, I'm not worried about, oh, he's a high-priced guy, so you have to put him in the top three in the rotation. I just, I don't think that's a, an issue. Well, okay, real quick before we go to tr- trending. How much is it that they couldn't agree with Evaldi last year? It was like 17? I don't remember Somewhere exactly. There? It was something so, in that neighborhood, yeah. Right, so if, if, if Evaldi couldn't agree to 17, and you know you're giving sales 17 and a half, and you're going to bring two other guys to be the front-line rotation guys, you might be giving up maybe forty to fifty million a year just for those two guys. I, you're probably combined. right. Yeah, and and that's and and there's the concern because now you're like, okay, Trevor Story still kind of has a big number and hasn't really yeah. been out on the field. So you don't want to potentially get into a situation where you've you've got like a, a roster full of guys because let's say these two starting pitchers don't pan out the way you would want them to. You'd hope they would, but that we've seen a trend right now that like, look. Look what look what New York's going through, Rondon. Like they're like we're stuck with this guy and getting nothing. Yeah. So there's nothing that's really telling you like, hey, guys are coming at because what do you think Blake Smell, Snell's going to ask for? What do you think he's going to ask? Oh, for? I'd say minimum twenty five, minimum. Yeah, yeah. But I'm fine. Like, yeah, but the other thing too is it's sales last year of his deal. So if your starting pitching salary is a little bloated this year, like, fine. Like Bayo's at an affordable number, Paxton's affordable. And if you want to look beyond the roster, like Tristan Casas is going to be at an affordable number for several years. Whoever right, your you catcher players, is yeah. is going to be affordable. Like even Yoshida, I That's think in the right. grand scheme of things, not that expensive. It's a good is a good deal, yeah. And the other thing, KJ, I know we got to go to break here, but like if you're the Red Sox finishing last place three out of four years, do I really want to hear that you don't want to spend the extra ten or fifteen million to be a contender again? Or you know, to get like, the, or get the same results or like, a little bit better? Yeah, you know, like didn't. I don't want to hear that you don't want to. Speak. That's why I think Breslow knows where the where the yeah. breeders, the master breeders, no, are I, versus. I think, and this is where I think he's going to make or could make a very big difference. Six one seven 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 nine seven ninety three seven. We get to your text and calls next here on Weei. Time to trend with Justin Turpin.